Oh, oh. Are you gonna bark all day, little doggy, or are you gonna bite? Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. What? We're gonna write Tarantino's tenth movie. Gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Let's go. So a couple of weeks ago, Tarantino said, Shh, not doing the movie critic. Oh, I have questions already. Why? Why though? Why would you, why does an artist limit themselves at say ten movies? Why did REM say okay, REM is going to exist until the year two thousand? Well, also when, to that point, why? Yeah, this is the pressure he's putting on himself. Exactly. No one's putting why? this pressure on you. You know, you know, you can be sitting at bed at four in the morning and boom, a freaking magical idea will come to you. And I love Tarantino. I'm a Tarantino super freak. But you're right. I love pressure it. galore. I mean, so how do you talk? If you've, he thinks you've got to go out on top. he's not going to be at his best in his 60s or 70s. He doesn't want to be what Scors like a Scorsese or, yeah. you know. I mean, hell, Clint Eastwood's 93. He's coming out with a new movie. Right. And he didn't. He never said, I'm going to make 10 movies and quit. No, he just, he just yeah. So he just goes a, with the flow. Putting the number on it. But I made a quick list here. And because the, the big argument is Kill Bill. Is it two movies? Let's just say, we'll give it to him. Kill Bill's one movie, the whole thing, one and two is one movie. Right. right. That's the way he wants it. That's what he wants. I've heard that it should, uh, number 10 should be a sequel. This is going to be a famous idiots in bars writing room. <laughs> We're going to write tonight Tarantino's 10th movie. Oh, that's We're a We're going to write it for him. That's a tall order. Well, or we're going to speculate on what, what would be cool to do. Body bag three. Right. I mean, there you go. You know. Right. Why not do... Right. Okay, well, <laughs> well, hey, great segue, Brady. Here, So here's the deal. If there was a movie that he wrote, but didn't direct, that you'd like to see him direct, I thought about True Romance. Like, oh, maybe for the 10th movie, it's his version. But the Tony Scott version is perfect. It, no, it, it is. It, to me, yeah. that was the perfect combination. You've got Tony Scott, who was a huge 90s uh, m movie sensation. And you've got uh, Quentin Tarantino writing the script. His dialogue is phenomenal. You put the two of them together. Right. I mean, is there a better combination? So what I'm wondering is, is there a way... Well, if you look at True Romance, I don't know if you guys know the movie Badlands... Yes. It's been True, a while, but yeah. True Romance is pretty much inspired by the movie Badlands. In fact, there's a scene in Badlands, the theme song of True Romance is from the soundtrack of Badlands. Badlands is an amazing movie, but totally inspired... Uh, Tarantino for True Romance. And I still say True Romance is a Tarantino film. It's a mm. Tony Scott film, but it's it's a Tarantino oh, story. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's his sensibility. In that scene, when you look at True romance. romance, that Sicilian scene is, narcotics. that makes no. the movie. I tailed it out of there. Would have got away with it, but your son, Ken, that he is. He'll be the first to tell you, like, yeah, I, I draw inspiration from spaghetti westerns, hundred percent exploitation films of the seventies, and absolutely. When you've seen everything made, how can right. you not draw from I, some of that? And I love the fact that he actually comes up and says, "Yeah, sure, it's my take on it." I think the whole, the 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 whole stopping at ten is bullshit yeah, anyway. Exactly. I don't think he needs to even worry He's, himself over that. And you can't tell me a mind like his. I mean, you've seen him in interviews. He runs at a thousand miles an hour. Constantly, his processor is going brrr, constantly. He's not going to so, retire. You can't retire that mind. There's I don't no think way. He, total speculation. The tenth movie is Vincent Vega in Amsterdam. Oh man, our man in Amsterdam. Yeah, <laughs> getting but Mia royalties. Wallace is there too. So no. if that was the case, if it's Marcellus Wallace sends him out to Amsterdam to do a job, I mean so, that would be a home run. But I think Tarantino. Well, well, let's challenge yourself. I know, more. but what would that look like? Let's write that it's one. It's interesting. What is that it's, idea? it's an absolutely interesting concept. Oh, Seriously, just the idea of it has my hair on my arm raised. It would be. <laughs> it, it would be. I would be a the guy who camped outside the theater to see that. It would have to be him and Jules. So we make it pre. Is it pre Pulp Fiction? No, then? I think it's a side. What you do is you actually do it as how they were talking in the car. 
do it as a deep fake. He could lean into the deep fake with both those guys. He's telling the story of what actually happened in Amsterdam. They're still on their way to go shoot, yeah. shoot Brent and the guys. Absolutely. It's that time. And he's and maybe I was it's about just to an, say the way that film is cut, it's it's almost there there is no time frame. It's not linear so, at all. They call it the Royale with cheese. Yeah, it's a throwaway. So, it's a throwaway line that sure. Samuel L. Jackson says. So what? What did Marcellus have you out there doing? Oh, let me tell you about it. Boom. And boom. But you do that part with like deep fake. Sure. And now you're. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Absolutely. I don't know how anyone else feels, but I think these car chases and these movies in the '90s and the 2000s with all this CGI going on is crap. Why not link him with one of the bank robbers from in for a heist in, in now Amsterdam you're now you're talking yeah Ooh. why not link him with Mr. Pink or you know you have some of the Reservoir Dog guy you could bring Michael Madsen back you know if you're using deep fakes you can use anybody and you know they pull off a heist in Amsterdam nobody's you know. really done a full deep fake movie oh, that would be crazy but he could pull it off no doubt no, if Reacted I wanted it. to do that, I would do that. But I've never really been a big uh, uh, um, do a bunch of special effects later kind of guy. If you didn't shoot it on the day, it doesn't count. But uh, he's such he's such a he's such a proponent of real sets, real life actors, real yeah, you know everything yeah, being point. on tape. Good point. You know, you won't shoot on digital. Or everything's on film. Everything's on film. So I don't. I don't know how that would work out for him, but I love the idea. I would watch it. Yeah. Um, he's done the 60s. He's done World War II. But does he ever have any interest in doing a period piece that's in the 40s or 30s? Probably not. I don't see him Yeah, and see, I, I don't tend to go there as a viewer. I tend right. to... It's just not an interesting era 70s to me. 70s would be the deal, right? Right. I, I think uh, uh, his last film was his best film. Uh, I mean, I, no, I don't know. You guys don't agree with that necessarily. No, but no, I, I like it. I'm, I'm like, wow. But that's uh, 69. But what is, what is it? What is an interesting 70s theme? Uh, well, there was the, one. There was one that George Clooney did. A movie that would have been great for Tarantino to make was Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Okay. You guys I know mean, that movie? Yes. I. So, I I was immediately thinking of Boogie Nights. Uh, oh yeah, when you said yeah. seventy, when we were talking about seventies. Well, oh yeah, Boogie Nights would have been. It would have been a lot different. Uh, great, great movie on its own. Oh my yeah. god! Dude. But you could tell Boogie Nights and a lot of those movies that came out in there were they inspired by Tarantino by his style. Yeah, yeah, by like let's true. Let's take a story in, of a porn star and make it quirky and crazy, and this new star Mark Wahlberg, and let's do the Tarantino thing. Is there any room at all for Tarantino to do a sci-fi film, or is that just well, he was just he forbidden. was thrown around the Star Trek thing. Everybody knows we're not going to get into that. Everyone knows that he was he had an idea for Star Trek, um, and yeah. it, it just went away. Maybe we'll cut you in for a piece of the action, a very small piece. But I don't know. I think Tarantino is such a dialogue person as, yeah. as opposed to a visual person. Right. Yeah. I, I, don't, I think sci-fi for him would be off. I love the idea of the movie critic. I loved it because that's a story only he would tell. I don't know. I, there's so much L.A. in his in his movies. Everything, to me, not everything, everything I really loved with him had the backdrop of L.A. going on. I'd love to see... Well, he I wants mean, to tell a good story, right? So, what was it about the movie critic that he wrote it and was like, "It's not, it's not it's ready." Not, apparently, it's not big enough. Uh, I mean, that's why I'm, I'm like, "Why not? Why put that pressure on yourself? Why not make the movie the critic and just move on?" It was kind of a curveball. Tarantino gets to direct one movie that he did not have anything to do with, but make it his own. I'm picking Halloween '78. Oh, I'd shit. love to see Tarantino <laughs> revisit because. I wasn't a fan of Rob Zombie's version. But uh -huh. I, think, I would love to see Tarantino recreate Michael Myers and do a horror film. Oh, okay, that's wait, interesting. All right, all right. That's so you're interesting saying for sure. if there was a movie in pop culture that could be remade. That he had nothing to do with. Well, first of all, we know he would never do that. Well, that's, why, that that's why we're having the conversation. Like, <laughs> so well, if you would dream scenario. All right, dream scenario. A movie that came out that was like, oh, this could have been with a better director. And if it was Tarantino. What if... Uh, 
Quentin Tarantino does Deliverance 2. Oh, man. That would be next <laughs> level. Yeah, but it's... Or gonna, redid it, the Deliverance. Yeah. Just redid Deliverance. Oh, I know. I look at that. I watch that movie. It's perfect. And I, it is perfect, but the, it's it's so 70s looking. The, the, the quality mic. of it is so weak. Uh, well, going back to uh, your the point. The story is amazing. Going back to your point, I may have to pull back on my Halloween Smokey and the Bandit. From oh, Quentin Tarantino. Oh my God! <laughs> Can you imagine that? That would be huge. I would be. In, I would be so for that. I'd be. I'd be so about it. There you go. But see, here's the thing. Yes or no? No in the middle. Do you think Tarantino can pull off comedy? I've never seen him do it. Yeah, and I don't know that he he has any interest in that. But that's either. one area that nah. he has not tackled yet. Yeah, because the best comedies so. are the. They're they're just nonsense, quick, especially today's yeah. audiences. You and we, know. In, in, in a Tarantino audience, we don't want a comedy from Tarantino. Tarantino would offend people within the first two minutes. Yeah, if it's supposed so to be a comedy. Let's, all right, we're striking science fiction, we're striking horror, and we're striking comedy. I've got one coming back to Ray's initial pitch. Uh-huh. Pick a movie, and he's going to remake it. Almost famous. Oh, oh shit! Man, that really? Would, that's. It's uh, a tough movie to improve on, but I would love Tarantino to see that. Style. That's what I'm saying. I'd love to see that. I, I would think it would have to be an 80s band like my, uh, Motley Crue. Would it not? Has uh, he ever done, why not do the old school sell your soul to the devil? The Jimi uh, Hendrix you know deal. What? He, he's done mm. that. That's what is it, I'm convinced that's what's in the briefcase. But imagine, all right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go further. Guns and Roses. Tarantino, oh. or all right. So don't do it. Don't do it detailed as Guns N' Roses or a biopic. That era of the mid '80s oh, in Sunset L.A. Strip. Oh yeah. Wow. You know there was like wow. serial killers out there during that time. They were bringing oh, in new I... drugs, and there was a lot of that era that was still. And hungover. everybody was looking for the next big band. It was all just hairspray. Women, no social media. Well, look Sun, at look at a go go, the rainbow. Dude, look at River awesome. Phoenix dream. death uh, at the Viper. Was it the Viper Room or whatever? Yeah. I mean, things like that. Uh, no, there's a so there's like a, a young, huge amount of so material there. As he like a mid eighties. I love that. If if Tarantino well, did an eighties Sunset Strip movie, you got to remember what's the one key. The one key spine of most every Tarantino film is revenge. Mm, uh, I haven't never, thought about so that. So now keep it in LA, keep it in the mid eighties, keep it sunset strip. There's gotta be a revenge thing. That's Tarantino. I think that's the backdrop. And I think you have somebody like Eddie Nash who ran the Starwood, who the whole uh four on the floor murders, John Holm murders were about. I would mm. love you could tell that story, which would be right down his alley. Oh, uh, how about he puts Nicolas Cage in a film? Have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and beaten until you pissed? Blood! Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few other gangster movies. There's a movie with William H. Macy and Alec Baldwin, The Cooler. Yes. You ever seen The Cooler? Mm-hmm. Yes. Never saw that. The idea of that movie, The Cooler, but with Tarantino's take on it, because it's a pretty slow movie, uh-huh. The Cooler is. But William H. Macy is The Cooler. So there's a he's he's just basically an energy vampire. <laughs> and he just comes over to the table and says hi to people, and as he walks away, everything just goes to shit. Like <laughs> they start getting, you know, guys on a heater, right? Right. Oh. Like four blackjacks in a row. Right. They send William H Macy over there in his tie. He's like the Don Rickles in Casino. Oh, he goes okay. over and says, "Hey, how's everybody doing?" How's he shakes hands with people. He just walks away. The luck just changes. Wow. Dude. A guy like that in Vegas. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing. You can't pitch me any Tarantino possibility and I wouldn't go watch it. You could say he's doing Scooby-Doo and I'd be like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm there. I mean, but here, here's, here's, here's a, here's a curveball. Cause I just watched the remake and I thought it was horrible. What if he was given Roadhouse oh, and wow. made him to make it seedier? Yeah. Like, wow. like a dirtier version yeah. of the Patrick Swayze film. Ooh, I've got another one. What? It's actually, there's like three of them. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready for Tarantino talk. Even though he's already done the Hateful Eight. But I think the Hateful Eight was, he loved Westerns. He actually talks about Westerns when they were in the winter. So that's what the Hateful Eight is. 
But really, yeah. once they get into the cabin, exactly. that's Reservoir Dogs. So they, right. they're in one location, right? How, however, look at some old Clint Eastwood. The big, uh, the good, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh wow! Um, uh, the strange, you know, the, the man with no name. Right. right. Those Clint Eastwood, those spaghetti westerns where Clint Eastwood was the stranger. A Tarantino remake of some of those would be. Nuts. Oh, that's a man. that's a hell of a thing. Uh, what was the what was the Clint Eastwood uh, movie about the stranger? What it was like, Hangman. Oh, he's like he was a guy that they tried to hang, but they weren't able to kill him or something. Well, uh, it was uh, was it Hang Him High? There's, hang Him uh, High, I think. Uh, there's um so there's the good, the bad, and the ugly, which is that's the that's yeah. the, the that's the big one. Um, and then there's one where they're gold where they're mining gold in this town, and then he comes in. It's the same character. Yeah. It's the, oh, High Plains Drifter. High Plains Drifter. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a yeah. Beastie Boy song. Those movies in the '60s, in the '70s, those Clint Eastwood movies. Oh, oh you know, God. you're making me think of of the Dirty Harry stuff and of the Bullet films, and Bullet. maybe oh, yeah, maybe the, that would be a, an area that uh, dude, uh, Quentin Steve Tarantino McQueen? should yeah. uh, Bullet. Oh man, should pursue. Yeah. Remake wow. Bullet. Here's All another right. one. All right, oh, let's man. Do it. Tarantino remake we'll never see. Young Guns. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Uh, you keep going to the westerns. Uh, well, no, I'm that's just thinking about. I'm thinking about a Tarantino style of an anti-hero, Billy the Kid. Sure, okay. okay. Even if it's not Young Guns, yeah. Tarantino's Billy the Kid. Give me a break. Oh, it'd be nuts. Do Blazing Saddles, Tarantino. Oh my God! Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Tarantino <laughs> remakes Blazing Saddles. Oh my God, dude! Imagine people think it's offensive now. I was about to say you think you think Spike Lee hates him now. Wait till he finishes that one. 